Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Nick Linney. I'm going to be your project manager on this job. Um, I look forward to getting to know all, every one of you. And please allow me to introduce my friend and colleague, Stephanie. Thank you, Nick. Hi, everybody. My name is Stephanie Bilkey. I've been with Texas Hall for seven years now, and I'm also quite a friend of it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samir Sajersik. I will be the project engineer. I've been with Texas Office Traction for three years now, and it's an honor and privilege to be here today. And I want to do something with you. Hey, Joe, I'm Nathan Lester. I am going to be your field superintendent, and I've been with the company for 10 years now. Now, on another note, this team just got off of uh, Hewlett Packard Office Building Number 65. Uh, they just finished out that building and they are ready to go. I think I speak for everyone when I say that uh, we're excited to get on this job and get started. Now that I've given you a little bit of a, a, a history on all of us, uh, I'd like to provide a little history of, about Texas All as a company. Uh, we just celebrated our 50th year in existence this year. Uh, to be around for that long, uh, we really have to, to form good relationships with our owners, and we do that by providing high quality, cost-effective buildings. We do a lot of work in both the private and public sectors. Uh, in the public sector, we do work in K-12, through higher education, and government facilities, as is uh, your project. Uh, to go over a little bit of our financial background, uh, Nick Winnie is going to discuss that. Uh, yeah, well, we've been really fortunate uh, you know, in, uh, over the recent years to experience a steady and a healthy growth in terms of overall volume. Uh, in fact, right now, right now we're performing over $500 million of uh, total volume a year. Um, and this growth, uh, recent growth is attributed in large part to our dedication and our focus on doing public projects. In fact, over 60% of our volume is comprised of public works. Uh, everybody here is familiar with what it takes to work for a governmental agency, uh, whether it's local, state, or federal. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, there's a lot of companies here who probably wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for the economy and the private sector dried up. We'd be here even if the economy was booming. So uh, as you can see, our, our growth has been continued to, to, uh, to prosper. And uh, uh, now Stephanie's going to discuss some of the finer points of our financial status. All right, thanks, Nick. Our quick ratio is 1.57, and our current ratio is 1.69. That's going to make our company more liquid. We are bondable as well. Our, bondable, our bonding capacity is $750 million. Next up, we're going to talk about some quality and hand it hand up to Steve. Thanks, Stephanie. As she said, uh, we, our bonding capacity is $750 million, which means that we can handle projects such as the NASA Building 20, uh, which is a high quality product that we can deliver to you. And one way we do that is through uh, a policy we created, which is zero defects trademark, which means that at the final punch out, our goal is to have zero defects for the owner. And one of the ways we do that is, <coughs> excuse me, by having an extensive QA, QC uh, process. We actually have a standardized process. We apply to every job, and then we bring in our subcontractors in our uh, pre-bid or pre-construction meeting with each subcontractor, and go through and identify areas of potential problems and create documentation so that we can control and, and follow each uh, specific item. That way it's of the highest quality. And uh, next, I'm going to hand off to Amir, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, commissioning. Okay, just to touch base on a little bit of uh, what Stephen just said, uh, our trademark logo zero defect is not just there to make our company look pretty and nice, but it's something that we value highly, and we try to accomplish this on every level and project that we do. Uh, a little bit on commissioning, the KPMG data center recently uh, got off. That was a project that had a high volume of electrical, mechanical, and plumbing. Uh, it was something that we value highly and we look uh, to work closely with the owner's commissioner, the architect, and ourselves, of course, to get the highest quality and the highest, um, to get all the equipment working properly to its highest uh, volume. And uh, now I'm going to hand it over to uh, talk a little bit about safety to Nick here. Uh, yeah, Amir made a good point on the, uh, working with the commissioning agent. We're going to be very uh, attentive and uh, responsive in, in assisting the coordination process uh, and uh, helping out with the uh, testing effort. So when we turn the building over to you, uh, we can make sure it's going to be fully functioning to its optimal level. Uh, these are three examples of, of many uh, projects that we recently finished uh, in which we had zero uh, lost time accidents. And we want to emphasize that not only because it shows our uh, dedication and concern for every, every personnel that sets foot on our job, uh, but also it has contributed to lowering our EMR, which at this point in time is at 0.57. Uh, 
which has helped minimize our workman comp rates as well as our bonding premiums. Um, so we were able to take those savings and pass them on to you as the owner. Uh, and as an expert in safety, Stephanie is going to discuss further our general approach for the topic. Thanks, Dan. Safety is everybody's responsibility. OSHA sets minimum requirements for safety guidelines. Texas All, we go above and beyond that to make sure everybody goes home safe. One way we do this is by having a member from each trade meet Monday mornings and we do a job site safety walk. We go around the job site and check for safety hazards. If there's any issues, we, we fix them right then and there. Another way we ensure safety is by directing our workers and by contract our subcontractors to require all workers to wear safety vests. As you can see, these jobs here are just a few of the jobs where we've had zero lost time accidents. With zero time lost accidents, that means zero delays, and with zero delays, it keeps the job on schedule. Talk more about scheduling from the hand over to Steven. Thanks, Stephanie. As she just said, uh, the safety of your project is obviously the less chance you have for delays. So that in turn helps us get the project turned over to you, the owner, and uh, helps us uh, build a better product. Uh, a little bit about schedules. We also have another policy of zero delays, which means that our goal, and we haven't broken it yet, is to meet the contract timeline that we have built out between you and the owner. Uh, several projects we have, uh, the Cleveland Health Clinic and the uh, Harborview Medical Center, both projects finished well ahead of schedule. And we were able to deliver that product early to the owner, save them time, and in turn save them money. And uh, here is uh, our conceptual estimate. You can find this in volume two of your packet. We have some uh, milestones set out for the uh, NASA Building 20. We recognize that these are tentative milestones and they will change due to the uh, timeline of the shuttle launches. <coughs> that way our project is shut down and not interfering or causing interference with your shuttle launches. And uh, at Texas All, we are going to be self-informing all site work, form work, rebar, and concrete, which is another way that we can pass savings on to you. And uh, up next, we'll pass it up to, to Nick for a subcontractor plan. Before I get to the subcontractor plan, I want to reiterate something that Steve said. Uh, we know that that launch schedule is subject to change, and we're going to make sure that our subs know that too. So when it does come time to shut the job down, it's going to be as undisruptive as possible. Uh, over the years, we've developed really strong and lasting relationships with our subcontractors. We treat our subcontractors with respect and treat them fairly, and as a result, they're motivated uh, to work toward our goal of exceeding owner's expectations. Uh, additionally, we put our subcontractors through a diligent evaluation process to make sure that they're capable of executing the project in the way we, we would like them to. Uh, and to talk more about our criteria of evaluating subs, I'm going to turn it over to Nathan. Thanks, Nick. With the pre-qualification of our subcontractors, we make sure that our subs have a good bonding capacity, have the manpower to perform the work, have a good value engineering, and have the past experience to be able to perform the work and deliver a successful building to you, the owner. Now we, we know that uh, meeting a hub goal is a critical issue for you, uh, considering this is a federal job, so as a result it's also a critical issue for us. This GSA Federal Laboratory Project, we not only met the hub goal, but we exceeded it by 2%. We've already taken the proactive steps of distributing uh, invitation to bid to hubs from, multiple, from all categories. Uh, as you can see in the, uh, the RFP, and we've already received a lot of positive feedback. We're known in the industry as a contractor that helps hubs and that works with hubs. Uh, we met and exceeded the hub requirement on this project, and I'm confident we can do the same thing for you. And now Doug's going to come in and outline our approach to meeting the LEED certification. Yes, as Nick said, uh, we understand the importance of achieving that hub requirement on this job. We understand that it's important to you, and in turn, it's very important to us. Uh, in the same way, we understand the importance of achieving a LEED certification on this building as it is your first LEED certified building on campus. Uh, we, first of all, I'd like to say that everyone on this project team is a LEED accredited professional and uh, I like to think that that just provides a good resource for an owner or an architect to come to for general knowledge of the LEED rating system. Everyone does uh, have past uh, experience working on a LEED project uh, and so what that means is we understand our role as a contractor in the lead process. Uh, we will uh, take full responsibility for submitting uh, all documentation uh, to the lead rating system and uh, 